This is a final review video of the Chinese web drama Ming Guo Qi Tan. My roommate is a detective. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where a junkie on good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Previously, I've made the first impression video of the drama Ming Guo Qi Tan. My roommate is a detective while it was still on air. It has finished airing last week in China on the platform ITE, and I've been following this drama very, very closely. Frankly speaking, it is one of my more appreciated Chinese drama of 2020. So. I'm making a final review about it. And I would say my opinion about this drama really did stay the same till the end. So I would rate it now the same way I rated it before. Obviously, this drama is not perfect. It still has a lot of shortcomings. If I have to be super frank and then not partial at all, just talking about drama as a detective drama, which is what it is, within its genre, just around the mark of passing. So see, it didn't fail, but it really didn't impress either. The cases do not really insult viewers' intelligence, but they also do not provide excitement. Some of them do stretch reality a little bit too much. It's okay within the dramatic storytelling land, but it probably would not work in reality. But still, I would maintain my rating because it did something that I totally didn't expect, especially now in 2020, when I am so used to draggy, unnecessarily watered down, Chinese dramas. And I think most of the people who got into this drama, the first thing they started to appreciate about this drama is it really so does not waste your life. It was super funny that um, very soon after the first one or two cases, when we clearly can see it is a connection scene between the first case when it's concluded and the next case is about to happen, the live comments will run through the screen and go, welcome the next dead person or welcome the next dream chaser onto the stage. The dream chaser is also the um, dead people or the uh, murderer. Basically, everyone is just so happy that immediately after the first case conclusion, the next one happens. And this is just what dramas should be. And it was like this before. But some Somehow, Chinese drama ended up being what it is like today. I think most Chinese drama audiences are suffering from Stockholm Syndrome to the point where we just don't expect stuff to respect our time anymore. And this one comes up and we're like, oh wow, it actually doesn't waste your life. This one point, I think, gave it a huge boost to me as a reviewer to rate it higher and also to a lot of people, they are so appreciative of it. But within the circle of people watching this drama and also probably the fans of the leading actors, it has generally very positive reviews. I think this is mostly due to the fact that the two leading men, Hui Tian and Zhang Yunlong, really did a brilliant job. They performed, I think, surpassing most people's expectations because this drama is not based on any existing material. And the pairing of these two are, let's say, not that um, within expectation because Hui Ting has been previously in a lot of romantic young adult focused dramas where he plays this cool and aloof and um, super clever and just doesn't have facial expression and emotion person. And Zhang Yulong has been playing a lot of supporting roles or leading roles that are very lesser known, dramas that didn't manage to hit anywhere and he tends to play those Fu Ar Dai, the rich second generation guy who is a quite funny most of the time. Nobody really expected this pairing and nobody really can picture what that chemistry will look like. So not that many people had a lot of expectation of this drama. And this drama also almost didn't promote at all. Like there's zero promotion going on. Most people went into this drama probably just by accidentally clicking on it, or maybe they're just semi-interested in the leading roles. Anyway, they ended up in the drama and very soon a lot of people realized, wow, this is actually much better than we expected. It is maybe by a lucky strike that they casted these two people who managed to form a pretty good friendship on set, but also on screen. They really do come together super well. And this is something you can't force and you can't predict. So there's definitely an element of luck in that. But then I would also say this result is due to these two actors really did a lot of work for their own roles. For Hui Tian, it's very clear that he is stepping over the comfort zone. He's trying to get out of the idol tag. And he finally, in this drama, I think, shows that he can be a serious 
actor because Lu Yao's character, the way this person interacts with other people, his little gestures and his habits are actually in very strong contrast to the actor's natural demeanor. But he inhabited the role very well. Those little expressions that you hardly ever seen him do in any other work previously. So naturally express that they do not feel weird coming off this person's face who you often associate with a totally different kind of personality. I think most people watching this drama didn't expect Hu Yitian can play this type of role who is so different from his previous roles and also different from what he naturally is like. Also, he has just huge, huge chunks of dialogues, lines to remember in this drama. He's basically the Benedict Cumberbatch of My Roommate is a Detective. Especially in episode 34, the first half of that episode is him dealing with one case, basically breaking it down and then finishing it. The second half is him confronting the morality of the story, Sir Norman, and basically connecting all the cases that have happened in this drama previously to this guy. That chunk is just insane. Although it does cut away to the flashbacks of those cases. So, I mean, technically some of them can be recorded ADR and I can tell some of the sound is not on set recorded, but still when he was acting, he probably had to remember the whole thing and then they can go in and cut wherever they insert the flashbacks. You can even hear the sofa making the farting sound because it's made of leather and when he's moving on it and talking, you can hear that. So it's actually recorded on set and he did it beautifully not just being extremely clear about what he's speaking, but his pacing, his tones, his line delivery has just improved so much in this drama. And I think a lot of people are very impressed by this because no one is really looking forward or expecting him to perform that well. And like I said in my first impression video, after this drama, I really start to look forward to his future works. I start to think of him as an actor, not as an idol. As for Zhang Yunlong, he's a more experienced actor. And he's been doing a lot of roles that are, let's say, just not juicy. But um, finally, I think this role has proven that after years of working in this field and doing stuff that are maybe okay, maybe not okay, he has enough experience, practices and skills built up to be able to pull off a very interesting role. On the day the drama finished airing, he sent out a blog post on Weibo that I translated in a community post, so you can go back and check it. Basically, it's like a goodbye letter from him as an actor to his role. And in that letter, clearly it shows he did a lot of thinking about the background of this role. Although you're only seeing him in a sort of a one year or so span of time in the drama, his previous histories what he was like when he was a kid, how did he grow up in that environment, what he went through to become the person he is in the drama has been very detailed and carefully thought out by this actor. So that the internal logic of why Chao Chu Sheng the role does the things he does, why he treats people the way he treats them, why he feels this very strong affinity towards Lu Yao's role, and why he almost dote him and protect him in an extremely elderly brother, even like a dad, parental way. And all that can be traced back to some internal dialogues and Chao Chu Sheng's personality and how he views himself in relation to the world around him. So Lu Yao, this character, in a way for Chao Chu Sheng, is the ideal life life of a young man of that time that Chao Chu Sheng knows he could never have. Lu Yao has this level of purity and goodness and intelligence and a lot of desirable qualities that Chao Chu Sheng can never have. And because he treasures those qualities so much that he would want to protect and take care of this person and give him so much priorities that a lot of people will like to read it right as romantic love interest. But I think the actors thinking about this character runs much deeper than that because the story is set in Mingguo period, 1920s uh, Shanghai, which is just um, not a very good time and it just keeps getting worse once it got into 30s and 40s. In China, we have a saying is 十个民国九个悲, 10 stories during Mingguo, nine of them will end up in tragedy because the era is tragic. 
And under that circumstances, little luxuries of life are often totally demolished by the huge tragedies of history that the individuals are impossible to fight. So his view of this role is more attached to the unfortunate fact that if you're alive at that time, you probably would not have a good life in the end. And Chao Chuzheng's chemistry with Lu Yao essentially is based on that deep sense of insecurity coming from Chao Chuzheng and his actual lack of confidence of who he is because of his not very ideal and um, pretty shady background and past history. And to play this type of role, Zhang Yunlong did not only just thought about how this person's internal logic is, he also intentionally change the way he speaks. If you compare his voice in this drama to other works where he used his own voice, it is very clear. And he also mentioned that in interviews that he lowered his pitch and pushed his voice further back. His natural voice in the male voice range is the thinner and higher type. He also intentionally made his speech more muttered. Sometimes you can hear he would those words to sculpture the role Chao Chusheng, who has fought his way to the top of the gang world and would definitely not talk in a super gentleman and elegant and Lu Yao well-educated way. So both leads did so much work for their roles, although a lot of it do not get screen time. It goes into everything they do, the way they look at each other, the way they speak, the way they move, so that the characters become super convincing for the audiences. Even though the cases are not the best written cases in the world, and you cannot really sell the ticket that um, super intelligence of Lu Yao is at the uh, most impressive level in the detective drama land. Still, you very easily fall in love and believe in the setup of these two characters. Third thing I want to talk about this drama is there is a little bit queer baiting of this drama, especially there are scenes in this drama about these two leads, how they interact with each other, being a little bit out of place and being a little bit unnecessary, not fitting into the moment of the storytelling that well. For example, the um, brushing the corner of the mouth seeing the uh, Chao Chuchun coming on top of Lu Yao and reading the doctor's script type of scene. I would say there is an element of that going on because BL stuff has been really hot recently. If there is a place to inject a little bit of that, I think it's very hard for production to resist a temptation of doing that. Besides, these two seem to work really well together and they enjoy each other's company and um, they have a lot of fun doing those things. At least it didn't come out very oddly or not genuinely. I can still feel that it could happen between these two characters, which will lead me to talk about the last point about this drama is I think most of the people, at least on Discord I've talked to, when we watch this drama, we just or do not like the existence of the female lead character. She really has very little use in this drama. And if you take her out, all her functions can be perfectly fulfilled by Chao Chusheng. So there are a couple of points I think that can support my argument that she is a later added in character for either censorship, or maybe there's some kind of investment and capital injection that happens very commonly in China, which is for production, right? Some, some people who would put a lot of money into it would say we want to bring Bring in an actress or actor of our own and give them an important role. Otherwise, we will not give you the money. I don't know. There's no proof of any of that. But the reason I say she is a later added in and not initially organic part of the entire story is first, the title of the drama is very weird. Chinese title is okay. 民国奇探, 民国, the time, 奇探, basically saying super talented detective or whatever. English title, my roommate is a detective. So that title suggests the detective is Lu Yao, so who is my, right? Who is me? In this current drama, it will be the female lead. But it doesn't really make sense because she is not the POV character of the narrative. The story actually starts with a shot on Lu Yao and he's the leading man of the story. Doesn't make sense that uh, my roommate and the POV character is not really the POV character of the drama. Perhaps they intentionally did the English title in this way to suggest that actually, initially, we just want to write a Chinese version of Sherlock Holmes. Because if you take the female lead character out of the entire story, it immediately becomes Sherlock Holmes in Chinese Mingguo time setting. Chao Chusheng would be Watson and Lu Yao would be Holmes. And it suddenly makes so much sense that the I in the title would be Chao Chusheng. Also, throughout this 36 episodes of the entire drama, you never see once where Chao Chusheng lives. He goes to the Bai's house, the mansion. He goes to Bai Yuning and Lu Yao's rented apartment. He goes to his workplace at the police station 
That's the three places he goes to most of the time. You never see where he lives. He has no place, which is impossible because he is pretty important person in Shanghai. And it doesn't make sense that he doesn't have a private residence that's pretty posh and well decorated, but it doesn't exist in this story. So why? <laughs> Most likely it's because initially he lived with Lu Yao. They are roommates. Therefore, there's only one set needed for the storytelling. But because the female lead gets added in and she becomes the sort of the divided personality out of Qiao Chusheng and she has to take the role of the roommate. Therefore, he has no place to live. Making a new set that is unnecessary to the storytelling means a lot of money. So probably they just didn't want to build another set for Qiao Chusheng because initially it wasn't in the budget. It has been mentioned multiple times by the actors, the directors that this script has been under work, under construction for over five years. And that's really interesting because if we're counting 2019 backwards, then that will be 2014. And if this year it will be 2015. So we can say at least the initial inspiration of this script started in 2014 to 15. When you think about what happened during those two years, first, the third season of Sherlock came out. Sherlock was super popular in China, super, super popular. I was one of those people. So I know how crazy like the Chinese community about Sherlock is. I mean, even till today, Benedict Cumberbatch is called Curly Holmes in China. And it's very common that because it's so popular that it could inspire somebody in China to write a script similar to that. Also in 2015, probably when the script is starting to uh, get written, two dramas aired consecutively that blew up to the point that I don't think any drama has, uh, has achieved that afterwards, which is the two dramas, Disguiser and Nivarna and Fire both led by Wang Kai and Hu Ge. And in Disguiser, we have this couple called Lou Cheng, Ming Lou and Ming Cheng by Jin Dong and Wang Kai. That was super popular. Male, male, right? Two men, it's like the brotherhood, the tightest brotherhood story. And the Varna and Fire, right? We don't need to talk about that. There's Prince Jing and Mei Chang Su. That was the year when two male couples leads got so popular in China, like taking the entire drama land's attention away. It would not be weird for the person, whoever that is, writing a script at the time to get influenced by it and decided we're gonna have our pair of uh, leading men. And there's little room left for a female role in that type of storytelling. And also the Bai Yuning role in this drama, the female lead, her logic is just everywhere. As a character, it's super inconsistent. It's like she's written for each scenes, like whatever purpose so that things can work. But if you link all the speeches of her and every action of her, it doesn't form a consistent personality. It's very internally actually contradictory. On one hand, she's like, I am an independent person. I do not care about my dad's money and my dad is the top and people who does a lot of bad things in this world and I am the justice fighter, I'm the good person, I'm the journalist. I turn away from my background and I cut myself clean of that. That's what she always says. So it is very weird that she hates her background that much, but she still has no problem of having a very close and tight relationship with Xiao Chusheng, who is um, the dad's henchman. Also, whenever danger or problem happens, the first thing that she thinks of is using her identity as the daughter of the powerful game master to get support, to get weapons, to get people fight for her, to get people taking little extra information for her to be her spies. You're like so double standard, it doesn't make sense. So this character just feels like so scattered and she's so not treated as a wholesome, purposeful character. Or maybe she's super purposeful, which is just get past censorship. Every other female character in this drama, all those little supporting roles that just show up for one particular case are pretty interesting. They might not be the best person and they even are murderers, but each of their individual personality shines through so strongly and you appreciate them. You also feel sympathy for them. They're all just much better written than the female lead role. So that is why I would conclude she is a totally added in tool person for whatever purpose and reason. And it's really sad that these days in China, you have to do that. I mean, just imagine a world without Bai Yuning in the world of Mingguo Qitan, how much just more relaxed and makes more sense that it will be. So this video is just super long and thank you for sticking through it with me. My roommate is a detective, Mingguo Qitan, is definitely one of Avenue X's favorite Chinese drama of 2020. Although I still have months to go till the end of the year. I'm pretty sure at the end of the year, I will put this on my favorite list. I am so happy that I discovered the possible future of Hu Yitian as an actor. And 
dedication to roles that Zhang Yunlong and Hui Tian have done for this drama and have given me hope to look forward to their future works. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.